Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. So today we're going to do kind of a replay review slash cast. This is a lower level game going down on Adaptive Zone 6. We can look at what our Reclaim looks like real quick. About 18,000 across the map. There's also a bunch of neutral structures kind of dotted all around that um, also serve as good Reclaim source points. We have Team TerraCorp versus Team Mustara or Mustera, which to me... Whenever I was looking at this, I couldn't not cast this game because it reminded me of like uh, maybe the Avatar movie or Aliens or something like that, where you've got a corporation coming in and colonizing against indigenous species and those indigenous species are fighting back. So let's go ahead and introduce our players real quick. Team one up at the top, team two down at the bottom. Starting in the northernmost position, we have CCCP. I'm probably going to call them just CCP, or maybe I'm going to go PCP and just go full demonetization there. Uh, but he's going UEF opening first land. Next, we've got the CEO of the corporation responsible for colonizing this world. TerraCorp going Cybran opening first land. Next, we have Irub, who's going Aeon opening first land. And last but not least, we have Anu, who's going UEF opening first land. Second, moving to team number two, we have Crunbum. He's going UVF opening first air. Next, we've got Paragon KZ opening first land. Thirdly, Mustara, the leader of the indigenous peoples, and he's going first land and land all day. And last but not least, we have Mr. Riaj98, who's going UEF opening first land. All right, so let's talk about some build orders first off. Now, the probably biggest defender here is going to be Anu. So Anu has not gone for his Hydro yet. Now, some people might be wondering, what's the big deal? He can get it later. So, four power generators as far as, and we can actually pull some numbers here real quick. But four power generators versus going for the Hydro. So a power generator is going to cost you 75 mass and 750 energy times four. So 300 mass and 3000 energy. Now, four of these produces 80 power. The Hydro, we have 160 mass and 800 energy for 100 energy total yield. So, it's a little more than half the mass and under a third of the energy to build a Hydro, but it gives you 25% more energy. Doing just the quick math in my head, that is the way to go on a map like this where the Hydro is uh, relatively close. Uh, next, going for some rail guns. And um, again, if the enemy never attacks you with air, these rail guns were a little bit wasted at mass. And even if there is an early bomber, you're going to be better off. Oh, well, actually, he's building archers out of his out of his uh, main base either. So somebody obviously hurt this guy with <laughs> with first bomber at one point. And I'm sorry, Anu, for picking on you here. Um, but usually, you want to build you'd build archers as kind of a reaction to first bomber and especially like at, at this kind of rating level i'd be very surprised if first bomber was a thing so picking on anu a little bit here building preemptive defense structures and then uh not building his hydro especially when he has an air factory on the way he's queuing up more power generation for the love of god build your hydro look at that it's just there it's begging it looks kind of like the sam ore from satisfactory but it's begging to be built please build it okay Next thing to look at. And this is going to be kind of like a little bit of, I don't know, coaching, I guess, so to speak. I don't like to do this a whole lot because uh, I'm not, I'm nowhere near the best player in the world. Like, I think I can be an okay player sometimes, but I'm not a great player. So I usually try and pick these really, really low rated games because I think this is probably where I can be the most help for players as uh, trying to help them tackle the steep learning curve of this game. And uh, this is another thing to talk about. Um, labs being run into a comm. Did kill two engineers here, but you know, it cost you five labs and uh, you didn't really do anything outside of that. So running some numbers here. Got engineer. Oh, it's tech two engineer. Why do you have no tech one land factories? Okay, this is a straight rush for tech two. Um, don't do this, <laughs> especially on a map like this, this size, you need some tech one units. 
Um, although he's not getting punished for it because uh, CCCP hasn't really done anything with his position yet as far as raiding or advancing. So lessons that can be learned here. Partial, partial lesson would be scouting. You need to make sure you scout your opponent, see what they're doing. And if you see them going for a tech two rush like this, crank out some tech one land baby and you own them three ways till Sunday. Is that the way that is that the way that, that saying works? What is it? Six ways till Sunday? I guess that would make sense because Sunday is a day in the week and there are six other days. Look at me. I know how many days are in a week. I'm so smart. All right, back to the game. Left drone now coming in for Paragon. We start no uh, upgrade and then we have gun. This is which one? Which gun is this? It's gun speed there for Irub. This is my first game on multiplayer. I hope I won't fail a lot. Well, I feel like an asshole now for picking on you a whole lot. Um, so, Anu, this is your first game on multiplayer. Welcome. This game is a lot of fun, but it does have uh, some kind of difficult ins and outs. So if you're out there and if you're watching, hopefully I helped you learn a little bit. Um, and apologies if my criticism was a little bit too harsh. So, gun speed now done there for iRube. Left drone almost done for Paragon. I don't think that's a good upgrade uh, on a multiplayer map. There are some people that meme with it in a uh, single player ladder. I think it's a little bit more, it's a, it makes a little bit more sense in single player ladder. But um, in a big team game like this, where you will almost certainly be in com on com combat, uh, usually it's better to go for gun or tech two. And on this map, with how close the players are and the reclaim that should be should be being fought over uh i think the gun is um far superior of an upgrade you can start to see that here with irub so irub with that speed upgrade really starting to lay in on these tech one units it's eight kills for that comm already and he is losing he is losing all of his units pretty much but yet maybe a third of the units that Paragon did going into this fight. We have a similar fight kicking off here with gun damage and range for Mustara being upgraded. I do like that he has light artillery here that is shelling the commander. It's a really, really good way to get free damage in on a commander that is doing an upgrade or reclaiming or otherwise rooted to the spot. Uh, so if you watch these Medusa hitting, each one of those hits is about 300 damage, which is not insignificant. You see this a lot um, on maps like Settens, where the front players are going to run to the middle and start reclaiming the Salem Loyalist and Pillar Rex that are in the middle. And uh, a pretty common tactic for both front players is to uh, start bringing, or is to bring uh, a couple of artillery units forward because. Even though comms might not be on an upgrade, they're still rooted in place while they're reclaiming. As Paragon here, committing for that Tech 2 upgrade. Very dangerous though, as we have quite a few fervors and you can look at how much damage those fervors are actually getting in on this commander. He was in the green, now he's at half HP, still not moving. His drone just got shot down. And now he's at 3k HP. Hi Rube. Move in for the kill, buddy. Come on. I have the tiger, man. Let's go. And Mustara also duking it out here. Paragon. Dropping down to 3000 HP, Mustara. Pretty healthy, actually. But Paragon needs to... Really needs to keep moving. No, he stopped. He let Irub get in range. All right, Irub, it's your time to shine, buddy. Don't let him out of range. Don't get distracted. As up here, Mustara still taking a lot of damage from something. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to go to split screen here. Keep an eye on both of these. 
as Iru pauses again. And Mustara gonna take out TerraCorp. TerraCorp literally just kind of stood there and took the gun upgrade. And Irub stopped moving and lost his kill. So we're in a 4v3 situation right here. Full share is on. Um, it's a 4v4 matchmaker, so it's always pretty much always on for that because that's the only thing you can queue up for. And uh, you know why that is? Because nobody wanted to play 4v4 no share. So that should tell you a little bit about how the vast FAF community views no share is nobody played it so they took it out of the out, off of the playlist so if you want if you want no share to be featured in the 4v4 matchmaker you should probably play it <laughs> all right uh okay so we've got mongoose out so mr riage used his tech 2 factory to really only build mongoose or mongoose Little bit of a problem. Um, the monkeys are kind of like the damage backbone for the UEF, while the pillars are more of the HP backbone of UEF Tech 2. So by only building one or only building the other, you're missing out on kind of the other side of things. Um, for instance, the pillar has the, mo has the highest HP efficiency per mass invested at Tech 2. And the mongoose, I haven't run the numbers, but I believe its efficiency for its efficiency for damage is also very high. So on the UEF, you need to build two. But if I had to pick one, I would probably pick the pillar if I'm only going to pick one. Mongoose just melts a little bit too quickly. Uh, if you look at these things, HP pool, 650. If you look at a striker, which costs way less mass, it's 300. So mongoose just a little bit too thin as far as overall HP to deal with even large amounts of tech one and we might see that come to fruition here as engineers that were trying to build a wall get taken out and we have an unupgraded commander from Mr. Riage does have overcharge on which is really good to see should use his commander a little bit more there I Rube with just the gun speed upgrade. I'm really crying out for that gun range upgrade to be included as well. We still have these neutral buildings that haven't been reclaimed. This is a huge part. So all these neutral buildings, huge part of the gameplay in this map that both that both teams are kind of just leaving on the table as far as free mass. And you start to see the weakness of the Mongoose HP here. As several of these going to get battered down to near death. Just against some T1 units. We have a ton of gunships out as well. From Anu. So Anu going for gunship snipes. And bringing them over to Krunbum. Though he's not, he's going after the infrastructure. So I guess you can make a case for it's a good idea. And uh, meanwhile, we've got Irub in the middle, making some very aggressive pushes with Tech 1. Gunships, though, now being brought to bear. I'm going to go to split screen again just because I want to keep an eye on both of these things. I obviously have reviewed this replay, and these are both important things to talk about so the first is the fact that we don't have gun range on irub so it is really limiting his effectiveness here he's outranged by mustara as well as the mongoose and on the flip side we don't have the stingers focusing on the commander they're killing all the buildings while if you just kill the commander the nuke is going to take out all of these buildings anyway so yeah, even though it's full share, and I understand like you're thinking, oh, it's full share, I need to make sure I kill the infrastructure, that's all well and good, but the commander explosion will kill everything in this little vicinity. So maybe he just left it on auto attack, I'm not quite sure. The star on this side needs to be a little bit careful. He's got a lot of tech, tech one units coming his way. 
and not a whole lot in way of defense. Whereas Cronbum, I think he's just dead here. Is there any is there any protection on the way? No interceptors. Anybody build interceptors on team uh, on the indigenous population, or have they not discovered the wonders of flight flight of flight travel yet? But I guess no. Now I'm curious. All right, Crumbum says he even managed Tech 3 Air. Why, why are you building Tech 3 Air when you can't even protect your comm from the air? Come on, man. Yeah, you need to build interceptors, okay? Even if you are not the air player, you need to build interceptors because of that exact thing. Like, stingers are gonna pop up. Fighter bombers are going to pop up. You need to build interceptors. And for the love of God, don't let your commander get taken out by mobile missile launchers. Please. Oh, he's taking he's taking so much damage from mobile missile launchers. He's getting that reclaim, though. But yeah, uh, please always build interceptors. Even if you're even if you're not playing air, build 10 or 15 interceptors. The risk reward <laughs> of the risk versus reward of building 10 to 15 interceptors is so skewed towards the reward side because even if you are not the player that is getting attacked, if you are paying attention, which I know is a tall order for a lot of people, myself included, you can help like your higher rated player who might get sniped as well stay alive just because you have 10 interceptors on the field. Even if you're not the air player, even if you're going for tech three air, especially on a map like this, where there's not really like a designated air player, like go for tech three air by all means, but build uh, build another factory and crank some interceptors out as well as some scouts. Speaking of scouting, what does scouting look like? It looks like nothing. All right, has, ten, has team one scouted? Team one has not scouted either. All right, scouting, very important. Anu has got a lot more gunships bumping around though. And using them to take out mexes. We have some interceptors now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have interceptors, boys. A standoff here in the middle. We have an upgrade coming in for... Whoa! Irup has made some big strides on his tech. All right, so he's gone for shield and then tech two. I don't think I feel good about the shield combined with the tech two. I'd feel a lot better if it was shield with range. I mean, regardless here, he has like a legion of fervors that are pushing this guy back. Where is the tech two? Okay, so we have a couple of pillars out from, out from Bustara. He's going for a second power generator. I'm about to become the biggest hypocrite in the world, but if you're floating this much power, you don't need a second power generator. And I know I'm the biggest hypocrite in the world, as you all probably saw in uh, my stream from a few days ago. I think I did exactly this, but yeah. Gunships essentially on the post here, now taking out Tech 2 mass extractors. Interceptors. Our lord and saviors coming in. Save the day, like the heroes they are. There goes my hero. Unfortunately, though, it's it's a little bit too little. There's a lot of stingers in this mix. So the almost complete Tech 3 Air HQ goes down. We also have Riptides coming out. I guess Riptides could offer you a little bit more um, maneuverability on this map, but Riptides just as a unit they're okay. They're not great. Man, Mustara keeps just tanking these mobile missile shots. It's a good thing he has nano. He drops down to 8,000 HP. He's he's lost. He has lost 6,000 HP just from mobile missile launchers. Just lost another 2,500. Move your comm, man. 2,500. 20, Hitting. I'm going to develop an ulcer watching this guy tank mobile missile launcher shots. You got to clear this out. 
go get the reclaim, but get it with Tech 1 Engineers. You got plenty of them in here. You got a plenty of Tech 2 Engineers. This might also be a good time to build some defensive structures. Um, some newer players are a little bit too uh, zealous with defensive structures, but this is a good time to build some uh, defensive structures. This entire army is literally like fervors and mobile missile launchers, and it is actually kind of kicking ass here. That with this absolutely chonktastic commander with a second upgrade in shield now. Come on, man, get in there. Get in there. <laughs> he takes another mobile missile volley. He's down to 600 HP, 300 HP. Get your commander, kill him. Go for it, come on, dive, dive. No! Ugh. This is stressing me out so much. All right, Stingers, in, on the commander. You can do it, Anu, I believe in you. First multiplayer game, it is your time to shine, baby. He didn't do it. He didn't do the thing. All right, so things aren't looking super good for the indigenous peoples right now. They're still obsessed with Mongeese, although they have a ton of them. And they have now eaten through Irub's shields. And uh, the fact that Irub went for all mobile missile launchers and artillery really starting to hurt him right now. Uh, overcharge at least? Do we have overcharge still? Does Irub still have overcharge? Why is his overcharge turned off? You're getting 4,000 energy per second. Turn your overcharge on, man, please. But Harbinger shows up to save the day. All right. We're back in it. We're back to work. And he's overcharging now. This is it, man. I feel it. This is it. He's taking a lot of triad fire. That's okay. Get in there. Overcharge the triads. He was doing so well early on about using his commander aggressively, and now it seems like he's really, really scared. His shield is down. I understand that. But just, like, there's, there's not a lot here, man. There's, there's some triads, but you've got some harbingers backing you up. And you're just, like, kind of sitting with them on the outside, letting them take triad fire. And your commander could walk up and overcharge these pretty easily. Have another harbinger coming in, and another one. Like, this is this is your time, Irub. This is your time to shine, man. All right. Mustara's back. Nano repairs got him up to 7,000 HP. Still needs to be, well, I, mean, I guess he doesn't need to be that careful because the Harbingers are all just obsessed with going up and kissing the, the triads. Now get your commander up there and kill the triads. Or go for the comm, that's fine too. But you need to stay focused. He's not staying focused. This is the most ADHD commander that I've seen. It's like, Oh, factory. Woo, tech one unit. All right, he's down to 6,000 HP. Don't bring the Harbingers in. It's going to block your pathfinding. See, exactly. Now the commander can't get out because the Harbs are brought in to block the pathfinding. And he doesn't have enough range to shoot back. Uh, yeah, that's a dead calm. Unless his shield comes back on. He's still having pathfinding issues, and he can't shoot back. This is just... Tech 2 has done absolutely nothing for him here. Range. He gets gun range there. The base dies. As it is, that push. Um, it, was, it was so good, but... Also uh, missed a lot. All right. I gotta say, it's looking pretty good for the indigenous peoples to uh, to hold their planet here. And uh, CCCP still pushing in. And this is again, I think another another thing. Like you, you don't need to make this push right now. Like, Irub, 
kind of needed to make that push because he was there, his commander was there, he had Mustera on the ropes right now. But at this point, all you're doing is feeding Mustera mass. He's got he's got triads set up, he's got a gun comm, and you don't have any tools in this mix to deal with that yet. So just pull these units back, build a GC. Lord knows you got the eco. All right, we're going for Novaks instead. So indigenous people invading the planet, deploying satellites. Man. There are uh, so many movies that would have been way shorter if uh, that had been the strategy all along. Instead of just putting boots on the ground, just nuke the site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Gunships coming out from Anu. Anu for his first, okay. I was about to say, like, for his first multiplayer game, it's actually playing pretty well. And then I saw this. Um, I don't have room to talk right now um, on the multiple HQ thing. You guys haven't seen that saga. I don't have room to talk about it right now. So maybe in a year, whenever the statutes of limitations have passed, I can again uh, revisit this. But uh, this is usually not a great thing to do. But I can't say anything more than that. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Nobody's reclaimed these yet. They've been destroyed, but nobody's reclaimed them. Somebody even captured a Tech 1 radar over here. So, obviously, these bases were on the players' minds. Um, but they didn't go for the reclaim. Big problem. Like, this reclaim really can kickstart your early economy. And even now, like, there's... there's uh, how much mass is there here? 36, 130, 172, 80, along with some rocks. Call these 100. I mean, there's a solid 800 mass here. Like, that's pretty good for, uh, yeah, I mean, 900. There's probably 1,200 mass here. Like, 1,200 mass is a good uh, good chunk of a Tech 3 max upgrade. Shouldn't be ignored. I think, actually, last time I played this map, the only reason that we won, I was playing in Anu's position, and Scoob was in, uh, who was this that got taken out? Irub. This was Irub's space. Uh, Scoob was in Irub's position. And uh, I think the only reason that we won is he walked his commander down here while I was reclaiming and we double teamed my opponent on this reclaim base and then we're able to take this guy out. So I think that's the only reason why we won. These bases shouldn't be uh, understated as far as their importance. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because not really a whole lot's happening right now. Novax is definitely not the right move here. Fatboy is the right move. You shouldn't be doing both of these at the same time. You should pull all the engineers off of this and build the fat boy with them. We got Titans out. I take back what I initially said. I don't even think you should build a fat boy. I think you should just flood the map with Titans. Uh, you don't need Cougars because there is actually, okay. Well, I mean, Cougars, there's a lot of Stingers out here. Some Janus coming out. We got Tactical Missile coming in there from Mustara. I don't know whether he's going Billy or whether he's going for just the tactical missile upgrade. Mustara also hitting back. Not doing a great job of controlling his units. At this kind of point in the game, I think it's, it's a little bit more forgivable. He's got a lot of things that he's thinking about back here. And I mean, this game, it takes a lot of, takes a lot of attention, but he's got backup. From Paragon. He's got a friend in Paragon. Paragonks. Lot of unclaimed mass on the map as well. Just unclaimed mixes. And not even all of them are on plateaus. This is one thing that I picked up on one of Jagged's streams. And I'm gonna paraphrase it because Jagged didn't make an SNL reference. Uh, I think Jagged's words were, these green lights should be like blazing holes into your eyeballs. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, whenever you zoom out and you see all these little green patterns out here, you should say, I've got a fever. And the only cure is more mass extractors. So yeah, build these mexes. Wow, the Novax is up? Okay, that went up way faster than I thought it would. Now focus on the fat boy. 
We got Percival's, Cougars, Spearheads. It's fine, going for like a pre-built kind of thing like that. You got a Tech 3 Land Factory. You got a second HQ here uh, that's making Riptides. So A, don't make Riptides. B, one HQ is plenty. But the defense satellite is taking out a lot, a lot of power. How is uh, CCP queuing this up? I think he literally just sent it over and is letting it auto attack. Which um, is fine. Okay, so now he's gone. He's going after the commander. Again, fine. Best way to use these things, though, is hit perimeter mexes like this that aren't under shield. And it forces your opponent to make shields around mexes that he normally would not want to touch with shielding. Mustara is pushing back. Spearheads are deployed to stop it. He does have Riptides, as well as a couple of Triads in here. And these guys really want that scout to die. And Fatboy completes, so this push is now dead. Fatboy's gonna open up at long distance as long as he doesn't run it into the middle. We've also got broadswords out from Anu now. Even if he runs it into the middle, though, a lot of these Tech 1 units... Fatboy does have, like, decently good Gatling guns. Um, it's really only... It's really big weakness is just its overall HP. Musara is going to die to the satellite. Uh, I'm not sure what he could do there. All right, so I don't think the indigenous people are going to be able to defend their planet. Barring uh, some huge miscommunication on the invading corporation's side or something that a screenwriter might write into a script as like a uh, last chance kind of comeback here. But Mr. Riage going to be in trouble here in a second. Shield goes down. I think he's only got tech two shield generators here. Broadswords. Should kill the commander. Actually, they really shouldn't. They should go and kill uh, Paragon's commander. We've got Janus being deployed. Uh, Janus actually doing not too bad against Broadswords. Better than I thought they would do. Broadswords still, of course, going to take a lot of damage from ground-based AA as well. But Mr. Riyash is going to go down to the satellite. And gunships being deployed by uh, Mr. Riyash as well. And those get transferred over to Paragon, who is now the only surviving member of the indigenous species. The UEF. The United Earth Forces. Is that right? Somewhere if Stryker is like... Comrade Striker is going to have some sort of heart attack that I didn't get the UEF acronym correct. But Paragon's comm is right here. It's not under shield. It's next to power generators. So you've got essentially an uh, unprotected commander next to two very volatile, volatile units. See if he's paying attention. Satellite is uh, not shooting at anything right now. Oh, okay. It was reloading. It's killing. Oh, wow. Didn't even have to break the shield for that one. That was right on the edge. Uh, Fat Boy. Not going to get overwhelmed, actually. I was going to say it was going to get overwhelmed, but Gatling guns. You know, don't sleep on these Gatling cannons, man. All right, but Percival's are showing up. This should be it, right? Percival should be able to take it out. Come on. Keep him moving. You gotta keep him moving. There you go. That boy's dead. Alright. Now back to... Where'd the satellite go? Did the satellite die? No. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. It's down here. Commander, unshielded. Killed a fat boy, Wreck. That's not very nice. He's killing everything except for the commander. That's just rude. 
He not only wants to win, he wants to obliterate you. He wants to murder you. He wants to humiliate you. I don't remember what all the rest of it Mick says. All right, Strap Bomber's now coming in from Anu. Anu is going to end this game. Right, Anu? You're going to be the hero. Going to be the hero of your first ever multiplayer game. Strap Bomb's in on that commander and boom, baby. That's going to be it. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with this. I hope you all learned something. I also have a bunch of things that were good reminders to me on how best to play. Things like building walls to take out choke points. This is something that I always forget. So hopefully y'all learned something just like I did. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.